just three words to describe Microsoft. Big company or startup? Hey, welcome to developersindev.com, a community of young developers to grow your tech career. Today, I'm interviewing Jess Pumphrey, Senior Software Engineer at Microsoft. This is the first part of the interview, the 360. As you already know, 15 questions, 5 minutes, 360 degrees. Then, you have the full interview in the description below, where we will dive deep so much into Jess' background. That's all! So why did you start coding uh, Android applications? Um, I think at the time, so this was about five years ago, Android was a platform where you had all these things you could use, like the camera, the microphone, the GPS. It just felt like there were a lot of opportunities for creative things to do. What is the hardest bug you've ever fixed? Uh, I can't remember. I always forget them. As soon as it's shipped, I'm like, done. <laughs> And then when it comes back, then I remember, I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> what I did. <laughs> so for you, what is kind of like your biggest reference or a role model in your career? I've worked with a lot of people that have really inspired me, but there's not been one person that I'm like, I want to be them. You sort of see, oh, I like this about what this person is doing, but I don't really like that part. So you sort of see in people's roles or in the way they behave, ways that you sort of, I, I mix and match. I guess. Okay, so for you, what do you think is the most important advice anybody else has given you? So this was a, this was personal advice. Um, it wasn't work advice, but I think you can apply it to work as well. My first girlfriend, when I started going out with her, um, I told my godmother about it, and she was like, "Is she making you happy?" And I says, "Yes." And she says, "If she starts making you miserable, dump her." And that applies for jobs too. Like. If you're working somewhere, you should be happy, like you deserve respect, you deserve to be working somewhere where you feel like you're energized and you're contributing. And if it's not working for you, then yeah. let's go somewhere else. Yeah, you should be or don't don't sell, I think. Okay, no, so now just three words to describe Microsoft. Big. Um, there's a lot of people. Um, and I would say changing because we have a long history and we're always working to improve and do things in better ways. And then I would say integrity, we're always trying to do things the right way. So choose one, big company or a startup? Um, so I've had both, which is a nice privilege to have the same job be both. And there are definitely advantages and disadvantages to each. I'm happy here, so I guess I'm having to say big company, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, so what is the most important project for your career so far? So SwiftKey as a whole, the work I do in SwiftKey is around typing, around people, helping people type better. And that's a very sort of gradual project that has many sort of sub projects in it. I did do one um, more sort of discrete project when I tech-led integrating the translator feature, so you type in one language and it outputs in another. Um, and that was a good opportunity to do something which was a thing to ship. And I'm proud of how that went. I think it went wow. really well. What are the things that passionate you most in your day-to-day -day life and what are the things that you would like to improve or to change? Things that get me excited are, you know when you have an idea and you can just go into that space and really power through on your idea and then come out with something you can show people and you can be like, look, this works. What if we took this somewhere? What if this idea that I've just sort of demonstrated can work can really help people? That's the most exciting thing. And it's sometimes it's hard to balance that. You sort of, sometimes you find yourself waiting for inspiration and you don't want to feel like it's this magical thing, but sometimes it is, sometimes it's just you get that that, that spark even and you just really focus and it can be frustrating to wait for that. So now let's, let's change a little bit into fan and random. <laughs> Choose three words to describe yourself. Um, I'm gonna say open, like I always like to be super upfront about everything and put everything out there and not hold things back or make people guess things. I always like to be upfront. I think driven in the sense that I always want to do things better. Like if I've done something, I'm always looking for how to improve it. And then I'm going to say changing as well. Uh, people always ask me, do you have any tattoos? And I'm like, oh, I can't, can't, I can't settle on a hairstyle. I can't settle on a wardrobe. Like I cannot commit to any tattoos. 
So what's your favorite hair color? Um, so I really like this yellow. So the yellow is not actually, um, it's not the raw bleach. It's a bright yellow that's in it. Um, it's with blue at the moment. I think I prefer it with red or with pink, but it's always good to swap them about. So what's your favorite phone application? SwiftKit, of course. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite emoji? Um, I use the thumbs up emoji all the time. You'll have seen it in my messages. Pretty much every message has it in. Thumb up, like the video, say that. <laughs> like the video. <laughs> okay, thumb up. So what is the funniest thing that had ever happened to you? So the, the, the thing that happened to me that became work legend is I was once asked my age in a job interview, which you'd never do, but I was the interviewer. <laughs> I think the interviewee thought that I was some child prodigy, uh, which is why my hair is always dyed now, so then they know I'm not a child. <laughs> this is a really hard one, but how do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Is the world still going to exist in 10 years from now? Is Britain still going to exist? It's, I think people right now are sort of struggling to imagine what the future could be and I don't really have any idea. <laughs> um, so now let's suppose that I gave you $100 million in cash up front, right here, right now. How good do you use them? London is a city where space is a huge problem. With $100 million, I could open a space that people in our community could use for whatever they wanted. I think I would probably have to employ someone to run it because that sounds like hard work. But with the hundred million dollars, I could do that too. Okay, and any like kind of dream or things that you would like to do? No, I kind of just do what seems fun at the time, to be honest. So when you're not working, what are the three hobbies that you enjoy most doing? So the hobby, I change hobbies a lot. I'm always like, oh, I want to get fit. I want to make music. I want, I, yeah switch about but the hobby that has stuck with me the longest is actually bell ringing like in churches tower bells because it's the it's a very traditional form of algorithmic music and it's very physical and it's very mathematical uh, yeah, I love it cool um, so what is your favorite movie and song I really love the Pixar film Inside Out. I think it's very cute and has a really great message and really fun characters. So that is, at the moment, my favorite movie. And later on in the long interview, we will talk about emotions. Okay, so we will. wait for it. We will. <laughs> um, I hadn't even thought of that, but you're right. And my favorite song, I love musicals, um, so. <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite musical? Um, I really like um, Matilda when I saw it in London. Oh, yeah. um, it's uh, it's a really great sort of adaptation of the book, and it's quite a sort of concise story and a concise message. And there are some very very fun songs in it. Ha have you seen Hamilton? I haven't yet. Alexander Hamilton, Hamilton, just you wait. I know, I know, I need to. I, I got in a catch-22 with Hamilton, so I'm like, oh, I don't want to listen to the soundtrack until I've seen the play. And then I'm like, well, I don't want to see the play. Well, I was, and then I'm like, well, I don't want to get use up my tickets for the play because there's going to be all these super fans who want to go. So now I'm in a bit of a bit of a loop. Uh, so there is the lottery, and by the way, the first song of the musical tells you the whole story. So if you listen to the first song, you will you will understand the whole story of Hamilton. Okay. But so I don't need to worry about spoilers. No, but okay. to be honest, I, I, I really enjoy to, to hear all the soundtrack because it combines so many different genres yeah. and kind of like rhythm and beats, and also includes the rap as a kind of yeah. like no, I really, re revolution Yes, no, I really need to uh, get really, my act together really and cool. see it. All right, so that's all for now. That's all for the 360. Thank you very much, Jess. Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, people. <laughs> Yay! That's the end of the 360 of Jess Pumphrey. If you liked the interview, thumbs up, subscribe, and put a comment. What's the main takeaway that you take out of this interview? If you want to help us, you have two options. So one is sharing with your friends so they can be part of this interview and the community developers in there. The other one is donating. So if you want to support us for keep doing more videos like this one, link below. Now, if you want to dive deep on Jess, you have the full interview in the description below. That's all.